Hey guys, it's Andrea, the South African girl living in Canada, where I talk about immigrating to Canada, tips and advice, the things I love, and then also the amazing people that I've met along my journey. Today I'm talking to Mariki Jones of Art by Mariki, as she's known on her Instagram account and her website. Uh, today I'm wearing one of her Iris Upfall creations, which I absolutely love amongst many other creations that I own by Art by Mariki. I'm so excited for you to meet her. Um, she's an incredibly talented designer. Mariki and I met at high school actually in Cape Town in South Africa and who knew we would actually find each other here in Canada. Um, I look forward to you meeting her and hearing a little bit more about her story and maybe you want to support her business too. So my journey to Canada started in 2004 when I met my husband uh, in Cape Town. Uh, he was already living in Canada at the time and um, uh, we just quickly fell in love and got married and it, by July of that year um, I moved with him to Canada. And uh, um, we settled in Regina, Saskatchewan. It was a good time of our lives. There was a lot of our friends who were South African, Canadian, uh, but no, nobody had kids yet, so we could travel and hang out with each other. It was a great time. What I love about Canada, um, apart from the fact that it's really beautiful, it's, it's, a, it's a completely different kind of beauty. I always said South Africa, to me, is the most beautiful place in the world, hands down. But um, if, you, if, you, if you look at Canada, it's a completely different place. Uh, it's gorgeous, um, the forests, uh, especially where we live now. Um, I live in Victoria now, in BC, um, close to Vancouver. Um, and it's, uh, uh, um, you've, we've got the ocean, there's some wine farms here. It actually reminds me a lot of, of Cape Town or the Western Cape. Um, it's just colder. Um, but, it is, uh, but the most important thing is you feel safe. You feel safe when you want, I leave the front door open, I just, I just pull it close behind me and I go for a run or a walk in the morning and I never have to stress. I, ne I never did that in South Africa. I had to run with, with friends, a big group. Um, you can never do that on your own. So for me, that, that feeling of freedom, I can just drive around anywhere. Uh, you don't have to stress about anything. Um, and uh, when you sleep at night alone, I have to sleep alone a lot because my husband works night shifts. Um, and that used to be terrible uh, back home. So for me now, it's it's really lovely to feel that just feeling of safety. You you don't need an alarm system. We have one which um, we've lived in eight years and I've never activated it. And um, and uh, like my kids say, if, if the alarm goes off here at night, it's either um, a fire, a gas leak or a ghost. Um, <laughs> So let's talk about art, your love for art and how it came about. Well, when I was little, I really uh, enjoyed doing pictures. I remember the teachers always told me, um, that's a great picture, uh, but why don't you just uh, take some of time, time off of the picture and actually do your work? I don't think I, I was actually good at it when I was little or younger. Um, I just remember my mom one day, we, we had this cupboard with all the stuff, goodies, memorabilia, and she unpacked it and there fell out these four or five sketches that she did and they were really good. I thought it was amazing. It was this these women's faces and the, she was practicing the, the hands and everything and that is actually a difficult thing to draw is someone's face or hands. People often struggle with that and I thought that was amazing. She drew all these fairies out of these little fairy books that she used to have when she was a child and she made these fairies for me on my on my um, uh, bibliotheque lair if you still remember like they have this file for library session and we had to decorate it and my mom did it with with fairies and it was amazing i remember the teachers sending me all around all the classes to to make me show all the teachers the the file that my mom decorated and then i was hooked so uh, i just i remember bringing paper to school and in recess time i would sit and draw um, especially faces, always faces, like princesses probably. Um, and um, I should have sold them. Everybody wanted me to make some, could have made some money there. More after school, like in university, oh, everything was expensive and um, I didn't get a lot of pocket money. So I used to make paintings for everybody for their, for their rooms. Then they paid me and then I could go out and buy stuff. So, oh, even back then, yeah, I used to paint on t-shirts. Um, there was this fairy craze with fairies and uh, I painted all these fairies on everybody's t-shirt and that sold really well. After I got my degree, I, I traveled a lot and um, I worked on a cruise ship and there I, I did a lot of sketches and um, paintings uh, when I had time. I used to work in acrylics and then only in oils the last 
uh, since I live here in, in Victoria and my kids are now older, I had two children back to back, no time for art. Now I have time and, and I'm actually now really getting my groove on with oils and, and so on. Um, what I like most to work with uh, right now is probably oils. Um, but before I used to always love sketching with graphite pencils. Um, I think it's because that was the only thing I was exposed to. I mean, we, I wasn't in an art school or anything, so, so the, the, we just worked with whatever was the cheapest for the kids to work with. Uh, that's probably why I never liked um, to paint, because we had to use the, this uh, tempera, it's this uh, powdery paint, and then you have to mix it with water. That was a mess, um, so I was just do, doing more sketching. And I discovered the love of art, uh, painting after school when I, when I bought my own acrylics. And, and it was cheaper to work in acrylics than in oil. I thought you had to work with turpentine, it stinks, and ugh, it, it, it puts me on a trip when you work with that. But now you, there's so many cool stuff that you can use now that, that, that doesn't have that heavy, heady um, smell. And I tried charcoal um, uh, with, my, um, with Ruth Bader Ginsburg, was my, probably, probably my first proper charcoal sketch. Um, it's on my Instagram page. It's a whole different thing to work with, and I'm used to working with graphite. Sketching makes me feel very in control, uh, whereas painting, um, I'm still a little bit nervous to make a, pa a portrait of someone in paint. I always feel more confident in, in ske with sketching, either charcoal or graphite. Painting is a different thing. I always feel maybe something will get lost of the person's personality. So I, 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 I choose oil paint right now for everything. Uh, f for doing any kind of scene, but to make to do a face, I, I still tend to want to do charcoal or the graphite to sketch it rather. Um, that isn't a, a love of mine to sketch. I don't sketch enough at all. So I was on Instagram and then I come across Art by Mariki. I think that's how you and I connected, right? I can't really remember. I absolutely loved your stuff and I wanted some of your artwork and I love the t-shirts. I'm always looking for cool t-shirts and I just don't want something that's very mainstream. Um, so I absolutely love who you support, um, your ideas behind your artwork. I love it. How did Art by Mariki actually come about? It came about uh, two years ago. Um, I always... I'm not really a, a big social media fan. It's good for business. But then two years ago, a friend of mine opened a shop and um, and she said I can hang some of my art in there. It's it's difficult to promote yourself. You never know how people will receive it. Um, but I realized you're going to have to put yourself out there and, and see. And maybe you can even sell that way. So I would say about two two years ago, yeah. Uh, I started with my Instagram page and, and um, it's been fun. Your website is artbymariki.ca. Um, what is your vision with your website? My online shop um, is, it's not, a, it's not really a website. I'm still working on a website. It's coming soon. Um, but my uh, online store is called artbymariki.ca. Um, it's on the on the Shopple site, uh, S-H-O-P-L. Um, it's a friend of mine who, um, who runs it. I can sell art there, but I think it's, I'll probably sell my art more from a website or Instagram. So I've mentioned my amazing Iris Upfall design and creation and I know a lot of my friends have bought the same one in different colors and we all love it but I think it's very cool to understand what sparks um, your sort of inspiration to portray these characters on t-shirts. Well for example Iris came about when uh, we were in Australia visiting uh, there a year ago. And me and my sister-in-law uh, she was saying um, oh, she saw that Minky van der Vesta is and he's wearing this awesome Iris. It was just kind of like a caricature like like a cartoon ca a character of of idea of Iris Alpfel and we love Iris and we're shopping around and, and looking to see if we can find an Iris t-shirt that we could buy because I would love an Iris t-shirt and um and we couldn't find any and then she was like you should make a t-shirt and one of my other friends Monica Meyer um hi Salman um she's a really good artist and and we, we sometimes ask each other's advice on, on art and um and then she's like oh this should be on a t-shirt you should design t-shirts so when, when my sister-in-law, Christine, said, well, we should look for an Iris t-shirt, you should sketch one, then I thought, hmm, that's a good idea. Then at least, um, at least if nobody buys it, we will have our Iris t-shirts. And it's, it's always something that I like, um, or that I think might resonate with other people, but I need to think it's cool and, and exciting to, to, to wear. Otherwise, it, I, otherwise, I'm not really that interested. Then I'll do a commission, like somebody commissioned me to do Ruth Bader Ginsburg, which I love. 
Um, and um, I ended up with a t-shirt of her as well. Somebody can commission me to um, do a t-shirt. I go with idols or people that I think is exciting or that I think will look good on a t-shirt. And I try, like Frida, I try to, uh, my Frida design is just a scribble, but it's a famous uh, look of her, just kind of halfway off of her face. But I wanted to do something different and not the same thing that's already out there. So I'll still figure out a way to do my Marilyn. I, I love Marilyn Monroe. And um, I have some photos there at the back from her, of her to give me some inspiration. And then maybe I'll do something interesting that, you know, like paint splotches with her face coming about in the mirror or something. Mm, I'll still think on that. It was really so truly fantastic to connect with you, Mariki. I think... Um Sure, your crazy energy reminds me a little bit about myself. Um, it's very encouraging to hear your story coming to Canada and just your optimism. Um, I think it's just so encouraging for other people out there to hear about your journey moving to Canada, being in Regina all the way through to Vancouver, um, and who knows what's next for you. I cannot wait to get more of your stuff into my wardrobe and into my home. I want more pro tiers, please. Um, I want tablecloths. I want so many things. I love your stuff. Go check out Mariki's website on Art by Mariki. It's M-A-R-I-K-I dot C-A and her Instagram account. Follow her. Um, her prices are super reasonable. She ships anywhere and you get it pretty soon. Um, it was really fabulous connecting. Fantastic. If you liked what you saw today, please subscribe to my channel to connect with more people, to get more tips and advice on immigration, moving to Canada and just generally life in Canada.